الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا First of all I'd like to uh, thank all the brothers and sisters who uh, MashaAllah flooded me with uh, messages and calls all day long today <laughs> For uh, yesterday I was not feeling uh, good Actually uh, I was here uh, yesterday after I start feeling good but uh, Maghrib time, actually, I uh, passed out in the woodlands and uh, the ambulance came and I was out for a few minutes. So, uh, but Alhamdulillah, everything is okay. So I came yesterday after I was feeling good. It was not yesterday. I was <laughs> but uh, I, I wanted to come, Alhamdulillah, and uh, pray with you. Alhamdulillah, and today, Alhamdulillah, I did the uh, checks and tests. Still a few more tests to go, but your dua, inshallah. Inshallah, uh, everything will be fine. Um, the recitation of uh, Salat al Isha was uh, the recitation of the uh, fourth Qira'ah. In fourth Qira'ah, we finished the Imam Nafi' with his two narrators, Qalun and Warsh, then Imam Ibn Kathir with his two narrators, Al Bazzi wa Qumbul, then Al Imam Abu Amr al Basri of Basra, uh, Duri and the Susi, we finished that. And yesterday we took a break. <laughs> so today it is Imam Ibn Amr, and this is the Qira'ah of uh, Ahl Dimashq. The people of Damascus, may Allah Azza Jal bring Syria back and may Allah Azza Jal help our brothers and sisters. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala accept the shuhada. May Allah Azza Jal help the fuqara. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala help all the widows and the orphans. Our brothers, uh, Mujahideen in Syria and uh, all over the world. May Allah Azza Wa Jal bring the ummah together, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So this is the qira'ah of Ahl Dimashq, Damascus at that time. And this is the shortest chain to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In all ten qira'at, qira'at al-Imam ibn Amr is a'la al-qira'at, yani, sanadan. Yani, whoever have the chain in uh, qira'at, sometimes between, you know, the highest people now, between them and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's 29 people, 28 people in the qira'at. Sometimes it is 25 people only between them and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the qira'at of ibn Amr. Huh? Ibn Amr is, because Ibn Amr himself, one of the ten Qurra, he recited on Abu Darda, the Sahabi of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, directly. All of the other Qurra between them and uh, the Sahaba, one, two, three sometimes, between them and the Sahabi of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But this one here, he recited straight on the Sahaba of Rasulullah, and in Masjid Dimashq, he used to teach hundred students at a time. So 10, 10, you know, uh, groups and each one of them has a arif or one of those whom he give ijaza. Okay, so they recite the Quran on him and each one of them teach 10 under his supervision. And he will go in the masjid and he would listen. You know, he will see his students is doing a good job or not <laughs> for those 10. And then he will go to other and imagine he spent all his life doing that. Rahimallah Imam Ibn Amr. And then his uh, narrator that we recited today is Imam Hisham. If you noticed the uh, word Ibrahim, uh, he, re he recited Ibrahim in the whole Quran. His other narrator, Ibn Zakwan, have some difference. We'll recite with tomorrow, inshallah, Rabbil Alameen. Uh, for the uh, nasiha of today, which is about nasiha itself, and we'll finish. We talked enough, inshallah, about, alhamdulillah, about uh, the nasiha. One of the adab of the nasiha, adab etiquette, is to know first that the person you are advising he actually needs that advice. And this is something that we mostly miss. Sometimes we miss that. Uh, some people, that sometimes they have this urge of nasiha. I call it nasiha syndrome. You know, always have to give nasiha. They have to, otherwise there will be something missing. They, they got to. So whenever, and especially the sheikh, right? Whenever you see the sheikh, sheikh, I have an advice for you. I have a, a thing for you. The same exact person, right? Always. After every lecture, there has to be a nasiha. And after every incident, uh, there has to be a nasiha. So first, you have to know that this person needs your nasiha. That's number one. Number two, after you make sure that he needs that nasiha, it will help them in their deen and their dunya and the akhira. Then you have to see you are qualified to give that nasiha or not. Do you have an extra that he needs or not? If you, don't, if you don't have that extra that he needs, or you are not sure, then it's better to keep it yourself, right? Uh, also, you have to know that this nasiha is to be given in public or in private. You know, you have, to, you have to understand. And you have to know the level of knowledge of that person, how to give that nasiha, the status of that person. Sometimes, even when a person is rich, you give them nasiha different from when you give a person is poor. You might consider this discrimination, but it's not. 
Actually, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us that. You know, you have to respect the people. You have to respect the people. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he entered Mecca, he, you know, Al-Abbas, his uncle, he told him, Abu Sufyan, he is a leader in his people. He became a Muslim, he's a leader in his people. And he likes to, you know, be a leader. So give him something. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever entered the house of Abu Sufyan is safe. What does actually that add to anything? And he gave general amnesty to everybody, right? Already, you know, if you are in your home, you're safe. But he has to say that. Why? Because he respects the leadership. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi So sometimes, in nasiha, first, you have to know that the person, he needs it. Two, that you have that extra that will benefit. Number three, you choose the time and the place. And then, subhanallah, of course, above all, has to have ikhlas to Allah Azza wa You are giving it not to score on the person. You know what I mean, right? It's not to score on the person, to make them feel that, you know, I have something that you don't. Or, I got ya. <laughs> kind of. If, if this comes 1%, kuf. Wallahi, akhwan. I te I'm telling you, kuf means stay away. If that 1% kicks in in your heart, that now I'm going to give that person, you know, the advice, don't. Listen to your brother here. If this kicks in 1%, your amal is habit, khalas. Your amal is gone. It's not for Allah's sake anymore. All right? So please, inshallah, we tatawasaw bil haqq and tatawasaw bil sabr, as Allah Azza wa Jalla said, but with those etiquettes, inshallah. And I'm sorry I took a little bit longer today. You know, as the brother gave me the nasiha. <laughs> Always I say I will not take long, but I end up taking long. <laughs> so forgive me, you know. I'm a sheikh, what, what should I do? Give a sheikh a mic and, you know. <laughs> May Allah forgive us all, inshaAllah. Ramadan Mubarak alaykum jamee'an. All 10 days gone from Ramadan. May Allah Azza wa Jal forgive us on what we missed. And may Allah give us ability in what's coming. Ba'da sunnah tarawih, inshaAllah.